example, it's a time for calibration. Four steps, you remember. Yep. Focusing on sample, make sure your Z height is right. Crossover, make sure the beam is passing through exactly the center of the column. Make sure the lenses are aligned and the stigmation. Okay, stuck with the height. So you need to find the feature on your sample. Then increase the magnification by turning this. Increase, increase, increase. Somewhere around uh, 5K, I would say okay. Auto brightness and contrast. Bring this to the center. Now, by turning the fine knob, I'm trying to do a better focus on my sample. Now, once it's there, now you need to tell the machine, here I am. See this one? It says link Z to F FWD. Right now, the value for working distance here uh, is 28.3. Now, on the beam control, on the navigation tab, the value for Z is showing zero. That's why this question mark is here. So once you push the question mark, this 28.3 will match with this Z on the coordinates for the navigation tab. But remember, always you need to do this on the highest position of your sample. If you have a non-flat surface and you are doing this on a very low end, if you do this and once you are changing the Z, the possibility that you hit the gun is high. So make sure always you are doing this as the highest level of your sample. Once we linked, now it's time to uh, do the yeah, crossover and the lens alignment. We did that before also because sometimes there are there's no signal, so you, you check the crossover at the first, but if there is, then you may do it on this stage. So as you can see, the crossover, that cross should match that circle. If not, by dragging and draw this tiny square on the crossover tab, so I'm dragging and draw this one by dragging the left mouse key and dragging it. So I'm dragging it. So I'm moving it. So I'm trying to bring it exactly to the green cross. Once there, cancel the crossover by pushing the crossover button here. Now it's time to do the lens alignment. I push the lens alignment. If the lenses are aligned, you should see go in and out. You shouldn't see any X and Y, any Y and X, any X and Y movement. You should do it for a high magnification if you want better alignment. You can do it at low mag, but then it's you need to redo it if you increase your magnification. So let's find a, like a feature like this. Increase the magnification around like 20K. By dragging and draw this tiny square, I can align my lenses. So. Lenses could be like this. So right now you can see it's going up and down. Even could be worse. Right now you can see it's like this movement. So you need to drag and draw this and bring it to the point that you, you shouldn't see any X and Y movement. On that thing that means that your lenses are aligned. Something like this. Once the lens aligned, cancel the lens alignment. It's a time to do the stigmatism. Okay. I'm on 5K. Let's go here. Increase the magnification. Now, to do this stigmatism correction, there are uh, multiple options. One easy one is to, to use the reduced area window. This one, if you push it once, then there's a radius area window that you can drag and draw and put it wherever you want. Even you can change the size, bigger or smaller. Then you have more control on the screen. So find focus. I'm gonna turn this to the right and see what happened. It's getting broly. I need to go back. Now, here is the focus point. Go to the other way. If the S right now, I'm just seeing over focus, focus, under focus. I'm not seeing any stretching. 
let's say if I mess with one of these stigmata with something like this. If the stigmatism is there, now if I try to focus by turning the knob, you see right now I'm in the middle, this is the perfect circle. If I go this way, I see stretching the circle this way. So if I go back, I'm seeing stretching this way. So that, to adjust this, you need to make sure you are in the middle, exactly on the focus, which is not no stretching there. Then try to adjust the astigmatism by turning these two and do a better focus or better image on your sample. So turning this, Now check it again. Turn again, turn again, put it in the middle. Do a better fine focus. Now the astigmatism is resolved. Now if I turn this, again I'm not seeing any stretching, just over and under focus. Anytime you change your working distance or your KV or your current, you need to redo your alignment specifically for the astigmatism. Once the astigmatism is resolved, then you are at the end of your alignment. It's the time to pick your uh, desired spot and do your imaging. So, as I said, for navigation, you can double click everywhere you want, bring the location to the desired location, once you are there, for a good microscopist, it's necessary to provide very high quality imaging. So I would say whenever you have a desired magnification, do your alignment and your fine focus at least twice or third of time of your desired one, and then go back to the desired one and take the picture. Let's say we want to take a picture at 20, or 15k. So I would say increase the magnification to let's say 30k, which is twice. Find the spot, put it on the middle. Now do, try to use the reduced area. Even I can go a little bit more. Now by turning the fine focus, try to find focus on the spot that you are taking the image. So somewhere here, then check the astigmatism, make sure the astigmatism is right. Once you are there, cancel the reduced area, go back to 15k. Now you can see once I was doing that alignment, that burning happened because of the beam traction on my sample. I can move to, because my sample is flat, I can move to the fresh part by double clicking and then press F2. So automatically uh, we will reduce the scanning speed to 30, mic uh, 30 microsecond based on what we uh, put on the preferences and we'll save the image. There are ways that you can change this if it's necessary, I will show you after on the advanced video. But right now, pushing the F2, it will, reduce, it will reduce the speed to 30 microsecond and it will start capturing your image. Once it's done, a video will pop up, a screen will pop up. You can identify the folder that you are taking the image and save your image. That's it.